Hey there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, the unthinkable has happened in that Microsoft has launched its own version of Linux. Uh, Microsoft Linux, we could call it, it's actually called CBL Mariner. Now, what does that mean? Is Windows going to move more towards Linux? Are they going to replace the internals of Windows with the Linux kernel? What about the Windows subsystem for Linux? Is that going to move away from Ubuntu and other popular distributions to Microsoft's own distribution? What does it all mean? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Microsoft quietly released its own Linux distribution called CBL Mariner. So that's Common Base Linux, and Mariner is the code name for this V1 release. It's up there on GitHub. However, it isn't quite exactly what we were thinking. First of all, you don't even get an ISO file. You can't download it, uh, put it onto a flash drive, burn it onto a DVD if you've if you've still got DVD, that is, and boot up another machine. If you want to do anything with it, you have to start by building some parts of it yourself. So it's not for the faint of hearted. However, if you are used to building uh, Linux things, if you're used to installing packages, uh, running make files and things like that, then you can do it. I did it takes maximum about an hour, uh, probably less. Uh, that was my first attempt at it. And once you've done that, what you can get is an ISO file and you can get a virtual disk which you can use inside things like Hyper-V. Now the key thing about this uh, version of Linux is it's no GUI. There's no desktop included, no KDE, no GNOME, no anything else. It's purely aimed at servers. And in fact, the repository of all those packages that you could install, all the, there are no GUI stuff in there at all. You can't just say, okay, well, let's install the desktop. It's not even there. And that's because CBL Mariner is actually designed for the cloud. When you want to run up a quick virtual machine, something inside, you know, say Docker or Kubernetes or something on an IoT device, then this is the way to go. It runs up this very, very quick, compact, lightweight version of Linux. In fact, I have it running in less than half a gigabyte of memory and it shows that its initial boot up, it's running only in 70, 80 uh, megabytes. So it's very, very good for spinning up microservices, very, very good for running on the edge. However, it does open up a bunch of questions. So let's look at those questions uh, one at a time. First of all, will Microsoft make CBL Mariner available in a more general fashion? At the moment, no, it doesn't look like that. It is obviously a conscious decision to not even release a .iso file or a file that you could download onto a flash drive. They deliberately wanted to make it a bit more abstracted. However, I don't think it will be long before somebody starts to put together a repository where you can just download the latest build and they have a kind of a server that does nightly builds or something like that. That kind of thing tends to happen. They've done that kind of thing with uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm pretty sure that kind of thing will happen if someone takes an interest in it, they find that the way Microsoft have put this version of Linux together is kind of interesting, then that will happen. At the moment it's not there, but it's not that hard uh, to imagine that's what's going to happen. Now, will Microsoft uh, move Windows over to a more Linux type of kernel? The answer is definitely not. There seems to be a misunderstanding that somehow the Linux kernel is magic and other kernels like Windows kernel is, is rubbish. Well, that's just completely not true. The Windows kernel has been in development for decades with some very, very talented people working on it, working very hard on it. And there's no advantage to moving Windows uh, over to a Linux kernel or replacing parts of it with Linux. There's just no advantage in that whatsoever. However, there would be a possible advantage in actually making uh, CBL, Common Base Linux, available for Windows subsystem for Linux. That could be something I would see in the future so that you can very easily then just get hold of the Windows subsystem for Linux running on your uh, PC. And when you start it up, you're not starting up Ubuntu, you're not starting up another flavor, you're starting up uh, Microsoft's CBL version. And of course, that will, some people will now say, oh, you see, that's their thing of extend and extinguish and, and all that kind of stuff from like 25 years ago. Some people just seem to live in the past all the time. Though there is the red aspect of it. If, of course, they make CBL Linux, the kind of the default for all of the stuff that happens in its cloud services, for the default Linux that you get on your PC if you're using the Windows subsystem for Linux, then, of course, that will make Microsoft's foothold into the Linux marketplace, into the Linux arena, much, much stronger. So that would make a good business sense for them because they can become known as not only the provider of Windows, but also the provider of good cloud services based on Linux. 
And I suppose the final question is, will Microsoft ever release a desktop version of Linux that will work like Windows does, but actually it's using Linux? And of course the answer is no. We can see that Microsoft are making a big push now with Windows 11. They've laid out their, their stall, they've set, laid out their plan, this is the way we're going, and Linux on the desktop does not feature in, in that way forward. We're seeing, you know, Windows 11 is also available for uh, Snapdragon devices. I've already got the preview version running on my Surface Pro X. We're seeing the competition uh, with the new Apple Macs heating up with ARM processors and so on. So that's the direction everyone's going, and Microsoft are suddenly certainly not going to just say, oh, well, here's a Linux version that looks like Windows, and we've put some nice icons on it and look you'll be you'll be no that's not going to happen so don't expect microsoft's desktop version of linux uh anytime uh well within my lifetime probably but no anytime within the next five to ten years who knows what can happen after that but certainly for the moment this is aimed at cloud services iot devices devices that are running on the edge it's lightweight doesn't take up much memory and uh, very good for, as I said, Docker and containers and Kubernetes, microservices, all that kind of stuff. That's the thing that Microsoft are aiming at. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this quick look at common base Linux from Microsoft. Microsoft Linux, but not as we know it, Jim. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. I've also got a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>